In the year 2001, a new virus emerged which is selective about its hosts. Deciding to select the female of the species, it has a 99.9% .9 fatality rate and threatens the entire world's population. Meanwhile in New York, you're pretty busy popping the question to the love of your life and thankfully she says yes. I mean come on, what's more romantic than the impending decimation of the entire population of the planet? Across the world armies have been utilised to control the growing unrest and as they have permission to use martial law, all hell breaks loose. The National Guard splits between those faithful to the country and those who want to act as vigilantes. Heck, even the Russians and Chinese get in on the action by invading one another. Across the world, the women who have not been infected by the virus have been ordered to report to a safe zone in Northern California or face the force of the army. No surprises then that your would-be bride decides to take herself over to California and stay there rather than stay with you in New York and put your life at risk. When finding her note telling you this, as Griffin Spade, you decide to head across the post-apocalyptic United States from New York to California in a bid to rescue your woman. So perhaps after the longest and most convoluted introductory storyline since Dai Katana, you enter your tank and can finally begin the game. Coming from the 3DO company at the end of 1998, Battle Tanks is perhaps one of the more unique N64 games to grace a console. Adored by some on its launch, it was equally panned by critics. So why is this title so divisive? Well in many ways, it's not about what the game is, but it's about how you experience it. The single player mode follows you as you rampage across the United States and sees you take in a dozen or so levels which fall into two categories. Firstly you have the city maps, which see you navigate the environment in your souped up tank with the aim of taking down a certain number of enemies before you can move on to the next level. The second mission type involves bridges. You start at one end, must work your way to the other, whilst trying not to get blown up before reaching the finish line. The gameplay isn't rocket science, and there isn't much depth and the storyline isn't going to be winning any awards either. But what I loved about this game is just the sheer amount of carnage that takes place. Pretty much all of the environments are totally destructible. In the same way that Blast Core allowed you to level everything around you, Battle Tanks ups the ante and gives you some serious firepower to do it. There's a huge arsenal for you to collect and the power-ups are dotted around the maps or they're made available when you destroy other tanks. These range from the standard missiles, rockets and grenades to the more exotic of weapons such as lasers, guided missiles which you can control to bend around corners. Perhaps my favourite weapon though is the nuke, which when detonated will form an explosion which will wipe out everything in its path, including you if you are too close. Having this weaponry means that you can approach the levels how you like. If you want to sneak around and take pot shots at your enemies you can. If you want to go in all guns blazing, you can take down entire buildings in your way, but the noise will alert enemies which will come hunting for you. By the time that the game's single player mode is over, you'll most likely have become disappointed in the lack of variety in the level types. With them only falling into two different categories, it can become very repetitive, and so I can see why many reviewers felt that this game didn't really live up to the hype. However, have a friend or three of them join you to play and this becomes one of the console's most underrated multiplayer games, as there are four different modes to play and the ability to form teams to choose which gang to play as, it really mixes things up. Like all good deathmatches, the game has a perfect balance of well-designed maps and the right balance of powerful weapons. There are plenty of moments where you'll laugh out loud at a kill and then be frustrated moments later when you're taken down by a well-placed shot. The multiplayer mode is fast-paced pure arcade action and with the right set of friends it can easily become a game that you'll lose hours playing. An area of the game that you'll either love or hate though are its graphics. For me, I could see right away that from the 80s action movie inspired cutscenes and the bleak and yet colourful first few levels that this game really was going for a theme. Sure the textures are blurry and the models do look somewhat blocky, but if you can look past this and really get into the Mad Max style world then it's a game that really works from an art design perspective. The Frame Rate 2 remains solid, even with lots of explosions and other enemies on screen. It's just a shame that the lighting effects are pretty much non-existent. And for those of you who like the modern, yet retro music from games like Far Cry Blood Dragon, then the 80s style rock MIDI tunes here will be something that you'd enjoy. The effects are also awesome, 
and if you close your eyes you could be forgiven for thinking that a science action film is playing in the background with the deep rumblings coming from your sound system. I personally can't see why the game isn't more highly praised. Sure the single player mode will probably only take you a few hours to complete but the multiplayer honestly is something which you could still be playing and having fun to to this day. The game does look rough around the edges but that's just part of its charm. It doesn't take itself too seriously and neither should you when playing the game. Pick this game up, complete the single player mode to get used to the controls and then invite some friends around for some multiplayer action. But what are your memories of Battle Tanks? The first time I saw this game in action it was during an insane commercial on TV during WWF Raw one night and so I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. Or perhaps you saw the mixed reviews on its release in magazines and decided this would be a game to skip. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and until next time.